So where we left off was that we set up the configuration of Overmind, but we didn't really talk about where it is and how it works. So here is the configuration file, and this config is the important part of our application. So what Overmind expects in our configuration is three properties, state, actions, and effects. State is all the data within our application. You can think of it as our front-end database, if you will. Actions are every function that will mutate our state and provide us with a new state. And then effects are all the side effects. So these are the type of functions that reach outside of our app. And if you really think about it, that will be our API middleware functions. So everything that's making an HTTP request will go into FX. We're going to make a new file here for authentication. First, we're going to define our state for authentication. And it's going to be of the type of state, which extends or inherits um, iState from Overmind. And that gives us better TypeScript functionality while we use all of the functions from Overmind. So now we're going to define properties on state that makes sense for authentication. So the two properties that I added was current user and authenticating. Current user is going to be the going to be the current user, and authenticating is going to be the the loading state. Overmind also gives us a derived type. So right here I added authenticated, which is going to give us the boolean value of whether or not the current user is available. We're going to get to actions in a bit, but right now it would be a good idea to define our effects. So the four effects that we want is login, register, set token, and get current user. That's coming from our API files. And then we can export all of our effects like so. To get the benefits of TypeScript when we're trying to define our actions, it would be a good idea to import the, the auth state and effects in the overmind index file. We're going to come back to uh, cleaning up this index file, but for now, we could uh, import auth like this and add it to our config. Now we're ready to create some actions for authentication in this file. The first one we're going to do is login. So login is of type async action, which comes from, which is a type that comes from overmind. And for that to happen, we would also need to add async to the function name or the function signature, whatever. And async action takes a type generic parameter or type parameter of whatever value that we're going to provide to the the action. And right now it's going to be login DTO so because we're going to need that data to be able to log in. The two parameters of every async action, as well as just normal actions, is context and value. Um, context is everything that's held inside of the overmind context. So that could be um, states, actions, and effects. Uh, for this, we only need state and effects. And then value is going to be whatever we're providing to login. And this is going to be a login detail. So we could extract out username and password, like so. But I'm actually going to keep it as value. Logging in is asynchronous. We're going to need to set and unset authenticating, which is our loading state. I'm also going to open up a try catch block because we want to do stuff in case the loading state, or we want to do stuff in case the request fails. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to get rid of effects here just because it's, we're, since we're using the same names, um, it's confusing. Uh, TypeScript, so I'm going to just get rid of all of this. And instead, in auth, or inside of index, I'm just going to add all of the effects here as API, and we're going to import everything from API. And that should clear up all of our TypeScript errors. And this is the basic logic of our login. Um, inside of our try catch, if the request goes through, we're going to set the token and we're going to set the state's current user to the user coming back from it. And if not, we're going to clear the token, which is set token with the null value. And we're going to set the current user to null. Register is basically the same function, except we're changing the, the type parameter as well as the value because of, it's based on the type parameter. 
And then we are calling a different API effect. This time it's register instead of login. And then finally, be sure to add register to your actions export. Um, one thing of note, the actions, they, or Overmind expects it into one package called actions. And that's why we're doing it this way instead of exporting each function by itself. I added logout, which is going to be a normal action. It's not asynchronous, so we don't need to add the async. All it does is clear the user and clear the token inside of Axios. Now we can start using our state management. So the first place that we need to update is our header component and update our to-do. So now there's two options for page links. We have unauthenticated and authenticated page links, uh, which makes sense so that when you're not authenticated, it would ask you to log in or register. And then when it is, when you are authenticated, um, you can make a new post and uh, edit your settings. Then we're just gonna use the use overmind hook here. So use overmind. And all we need from it is gonna be the state. And specifically the state of um, is authenticated. It's not called is authenticated, it's called authenticated. And based on your authenticated status, the page links will be either the authenticated page links or the unauthenticated page links. And then the rest of the component will stay the same. There is also one small edit that I wanted to do for each individual nav link, and that is to update our nav link's uh, class name. So the correct CSS is applied when we when it's the current page. And to do that, Reach Router gives us a get props uh, property that we could use and check if it's the current route. And we just update class name to have the active class if it's active. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new directory called pages. So that would be, and that's where we're gonna add a new page component called auth. Also while we're here, I'm gonna add, or yeah, another package just for utility called react use. And React uses just a small library of a bunch of custom hooks that you don't have to rewrite. So let's open up our auth page and start filling this out. This auth page is going to have some uh, props of its own. Because this component is going to be a top level route component, it's going to inherit route component props from reach router. And then make sure you add your props to the auth component type. And then in the app component, we're going to add that page here. Because the markup is almost exactly the same, we're going to reuse auth for both the login and register endpoint. And this is why we want to add uh, properties of its own here. I'm going to be calling it auth for auth type. And this is going to be login. And this is going to be register. And for that to happen, we have to make sure that we update our auth props here for auth. And instead of string, I'm going to be using login or register just for a more strict type checking and of course we're going to be using it so i'm going to make sure to destructure that out of our props from our function component here all right and if we open up the front end instructions and scroll down to uh, where auth is here it is the login and register page uh, we're basically gonna take this and translate it to jsx so i'm just gonna move it here for reference and start adding all the markup here. Okay, so this is basically the auth header of the page. Um, I left two opening interpolation things here because we're gonna add two properties. The first one is gonna be the, the header. And the second one is gonna be the little link here that says have an account. All right, both of those texts is gonna be based on what type of auth it is. 
right here I just have the little ternary of saying if the auth is login it's gonna be this text and if it's not it's gonna be this other text so then we're just gonna add it into the interpolation I just realized this paragraph needs to be a link so let's fix that really quick so I changed um, the property of link to being the actual uh, link path and then link text is going to be what's whatever's inside all right now we can start the app and test out some of these things and while that's starting up um, I'm gonna also start up the over my dev tools so over my dev tools start and let's see what all right let's see how far this is going all right cool our app is open or it's up and running um but it is in the wrong window so all right there we go now we can look at our application so far so this is our temporary hello world and and our authentication pages should live in both sign in and sign up and we have different text for both and we also can see the current state um, there's one last thing I wanted to do before we move to the next concept which will be formic because we're gonna need to be able to sign in that'll be in the next video but right now um, let's do a simple sign in inside of just doing a mount this is the reason why I added react use earlier I'm gonna close this so that we have a little bit more space and we're gonna do import use mount and we're just going to do a simple login on mount of the entire application. So I'm going to change this to do a return here. And if you remember, we need to use the hook use overmind. And then we're going to use the use mounts hook from react use. And from use overmind, all we want is the effects. Um, no, we don't want effects. Uh, what we actually want is actions. And on use mount, we're just gonna um, call actions dot login, and let's make sure this is a callback function. One thing to note is that we're using the API uh, endpoint given to us by Conduit, so this is gonna be the official API. Um, so any updates here will change in the actual conduit demo websites and I just happen to know that one of the users is username at fmail.com with a password and password and that's what we're gonna be using for just this example but once you log in you'll notice that um, the links have opened up and we go into overmind the authenticated state is true and the current user is all of this stuff and then we can also jump into all the actions that we uh, that we sent, and the first, the only one is going to be login, and this is going to be all the stuff that happened. We set authenticating to true. Uh, we did a login, and this is all the stuff that came back. We also did a set token, and we did a set current user. So pretty straightforward. Um. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and we're going to fill out the actual form area which will take up this space and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.